All right, let's try to get the big picture here, or at least a picture. So let's get some graphs. Uh, so just as a reminder, uh, we were looking at this particular transition matrix and this starting uh, vector of 2, 3. And we ended up breaking this starting vector 2, 3 down uh, into a combination of the eigenvectors. And once we had done that, we could say, hey, anytime we run these eigenvectors through the matrix, it's just the same as multiplying them by the eigenvalue. Uh, so eventually we sort of got this form here of saying uh, the 1, 5 vector grows by 20% and the 1, 1 vector shrinks by 20%, shrinks to 80% of what it was. And we can analyze long-term growth that way. Um, so let's look graphically at what's going on with that. So there's the 1, 5 vector with a, uh, a growth factor, an eigenvalue of 1.2. Um, so anytime this vector gets fed through the matrix, uh, it grows a little bit. It takes you further out this way. Uh, this is 1, 1, and it shrinks. So actually, I think I think I don't want an arrowhead on the end of it that looks like that. I actually kind of want an arrowhead on the end that looks looks more like that or maybe I should put some arrows along the way here say so, okay that one shrinks you in toward the origin this one moves you out into outer space and if you have a starting point like two three that's made up of combinations of both of these depending on how much red and how much blue it has in it to make this purple dot. Uh, you know, the red part's going to sort of pull it in, but the, as it gets more of the blue, the blue sort of takes it off and takes it away. So it might end up traveling a path that looks something like that. Uh, I think we actually, we actually found with 2-3 that um, it was already, there was more blue than red in it to start with, so it was already taking off and getting bigger with every step. But if it's pretty close to the red, it can kind of suck in a little bit before the blue uh, takes over and takes it outward. Um, so I'm bad at drawing, computers are good at drawing, so let's get a, a computer generated sketch of what's going on here. Um, so this uh, green one was the 0.8. And this purplish one was the 1.2. And here's a hypothetical starting point that's pretty close to the, the green. So for a while, so this is step one, right? A times V. This is step two, A squared times V. Of course, we're not actually doing it by squaring matrices. We're doing it by powers of eigenvalues. But anyway, as it transitions on, it eventually sort of gets sucked into the blue and heads off to a growth and notice, even if you start really close, uh, let's see, let me get on the right layer. If you, even if you start really close here, so you're really caught up in the current of the green, but the blue is pulling on it, or sorry, the purple in this scheme, the purple's pulling on it just a little bit, and eventually it rounds the corner and starts heading off. Uh, the only way to actually get to the origin is if you start right on the eigenvector, the 0.8 eigenvector. So it's purely green and no purple in this scheme. Uh, that will just take you down the green, 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 down the 0.8 smaller each time. So actually it's going to get more dense in here. 0.8 of that, 0.8 of that, 0.8 of that. But eventually you get sucked in toward the origin. Um, okay, so this is a good way to analyze behavior based on any starting points, you can sort of see these, these lines that give you what would happen. And um, this is the sort of typical sort of situation for one eigenvalue being smaller than one and the other eigenvalue being bigger than one. You sort of get this uh, whiplash as you go around the corners of one or the other. Uh, let's look at a few other situations. 
Uh, let's maybe look at the case where both eigenvalues are less than 1. Uh, if that is the case, then no matter where you start, sort of both currents are pulling you inward toward the origin. So the arrows here on this, uh, sorry, that should be green. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to keep up with colors. Oops. What's going on? Um, <laughs> we'll try to get fancy with the colors. Uh, the green is sucking you in. Although not super strongly, it's, it's only 0.9, so each time is 90% of what it was before. Uh, the purple is also sucking you in, and that sucks you in really strongly. It's Each time is 40% of what it was before. So in the typical starting example here was, was over here, and since the purple is so strong, right, it really jumps to the left, or, well, it jumps in the purple direction. It jumps in this direction a lot. The green pulls on it a little bit, so it's not straight purple direction. There's a little bit of green pull to it. A lot of purple, a little green. And as you get closer to the green, then the green takes over, has more influence, and starts drawing it in until you actually looks like you're pretty close to being on the eigenspace, on the multiples of the eigenvector. Uh, and then you just step down by 0.9 of the distance. So whatever this distance was right here, your next step is 90% of that, and then 90% of that, and da, da 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 and eventually, yeah, you just suck closer and closer to the origin. Uh, you never actually get to the origin, by the way, because you're always just 90% of where you were before, but, but closer and closer. Um, so this situation, uh, where both eigenvalues are less than one, uh, we say that the origin, the center, Um, is an attractor. The origin attracts all points, no matter where they start. That's the black hole that eventually sucks everything in. Uh, so imagine what this graph might look like if both eigenvalues are bigger than 1. Um, this time, the green, uh, that eigenvalue is 1.2, so every time the green gets to have influence, it moves you 20% further away. And however much your starting value is made up of purple, uh, that moves 80% further away each time, it multiplies by 1.8. So these are really taking off. And again, our typical starting value here that's made up of some green and some purple. Uh, it's pretty close to the green to start with, so it's the 20% this way has an effect, but then the 80% this way also shoves it and shoves it. And as you get further out here, then it's mostly the purple having an effect. So it shoves it a lot that way. The green only shoves a little bit outward, so it's still not quite on the not quite on the straight purple line. If it was just the purple having an effect here, it looks like, oops, trying to draw parallel to this one up here. <laughs> looks like it go about there, but the green still makes up a little bit of this, so it, the green's shoving it a little bit further down. Uh, okay, so guess what the origin's called in this situation? Uh, let's see, where shall I write it? Origin is a repeller. So any point, no matter where it starts, is repelled from the origin and flung off into space somewhere. And we should look too at the situation where one of the eigenvalues is 1. Uh, the other eigenvalue here is 0.8. Um, so however much the purple has an influence, that moves it toward, in the purple direction, I guess, and 80% of what it was before. So there it's moves purple, and it's made up of some green too, but the green doesn't shove it. Its eigenvalue is just one. It just keeps the amount of green exactly the same, right? 
So this is getting 80% of what it was, 80% of what it was, 80% of what that was, 80% of what that was. The green's just saying, hey, same amount of green, same amount of green, same amount of green. As you get closer and closer and closer and closer here, eventually the amount of purple in this is shrinking to zero and you get on the green where it just says stay the same, stay the same, stay the same. That's all the green does is keep it the same. Uh, so this is where you get a steady state vector, right? You just, whatever this dot is here, you feed it through the matrix and you get this dot again. And you feed it through and you get this dot again. Um, and how quickly you get there depends on the size of the eigenvalue for the other eigenspace. You know, um, that gives you your ability to not be on the green line somewhere else because of the purple and the purple shows you how you transition to get over here. Okay, so all of these so far had to do, and this is steady state, right? The origin is not a repeller or an attractor. Uh, so far, all of these had to do with eigenvalues and eigenvectors that were real. And we know, of course, that we have done some that have complex eigenvalues and eigenvectors. And for those, we know the basic idea is a complex eigenvalue produces a rotation. Uh, so this is just one example of complex eigenvalues. And I think we've already seen a picture somewhat like this from the book. Uh, but this says, hey, there's the starting V. After you multiply by A once, it rotates around to here. And when you rotate by A twice, it's around to here. The third time's around to here, almost back to the start, but not quite. If it landed right on the start, you just get these same three dots over and over again. But obviously it doesn't, so it's a little bit beyond the initial by three times. So this is the fourth one right here, a little bit beyond the first one, and the fifth one, and so on. Uh, this, by the way, um, has a complex eigenvalue whose magnitude is one. Uh, so it's just pure rotation. And again, not on a circle because the change of basis puts you on, along this ellipse rather than on a circle. Um, but let me just say here that the the uh, magnitude, the size of the eigenvalue here is one. Uh, so whatever that a plus bi is, when you do a squared plus b squared, uh, you get 1. So the scaling factor is 1 on these. Uh, if the scaling factor was bigger than 1, oh, I should totally should have done that in red. Sorry, here. This is an eigen value of 1, because the red dots. So if you had instead gotten... complex eigenvalue that was bigger than one and your starting value would go there but in addition to rotating it would also scale you outwards so your next one would be out here and your next one would be out here and your next one would be out here uh, and you continue to spiral outward so instead of just getting an ellipse you get a spiral getting bigger and bigger and I'm pretty soon not gonna be able to draw it but these dots would eventually end up forming an outward facing spiral and of course uh, the other possibility is your complex eigenvalue has a magnitude that's less than one like 0.8 then your first one would be here your second one would be here third one would be here and I'm not going to be able to draw this very well. Artistic skills are not my ability, but <laughs> but eventually you'd end up spiraling in uh, toward the origin. And you get this same sort of... Uh, the origin is an attractor, the origin is a repeller, or the origin is just your focus of your orbit. So there, the origin is a repeller, and here the origin is an attractor.
All right, that is it uh, for the course, honestly. I'll do one more video with a couple homework examples, but I think you can imagine there's so many places you could go from here. Um, there are some, there are entire courses in discrete dynamical systems uh, that start with this kind of stuff as day one and analyze behavior of all sorts of complex systems. We're just doing two-dimensional systems here, but there's nothing wrong with having a, a 10 by 10 matrix as your transition matrix, and you can still analyze the dynamic system. And that's just chapter five, right? There's lots of other places you can go from chapter four and chapter two and one. Uh, you find linear algebra in so many different places, uh, in further math courses and in engineering and sciences. Uh, it's People have found it useful enough that it has worked its way into a lot of different areas. So you may encounter it again in your further education or work. Uh, you may not, but even if you don't, uh, you at least know it's out there. And if you encounter a problem that you think these tools would work on, you'll at least remember that you have these tools or that you had them at one point and you can refresh yourself on them again. All right, um, great job. I'm so appreciated working with all of you this quarter. And uh, I guess I'll see you in the homework examples.